Okay, so the next hurdle we need to get over is that there are words of multiple lengths and you need to be able to let the game know when you've stopped and say, okay, check to see if this is a real word. Particularly when it's overlapping, like win is one letter short of wine. So W-I-N um, is the same sequence. So you wouldn't want to stop if you're trying to do the four-letter version of the word. So if you're trying to do win or wine, you want to be able to manually say, okay, I've clicked all the letters. Um, is this a word? So we need to add a new functionality that does that, that says, okay, stop what you're doing and check. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a right-click functionality, but it's going to be a little bit different because right now you left-click on an object, but that's actually checking a collision. We're going to check a right-click, and that works a little bit different because we're not going to be right-clicking uh, explicitly on an object, it doesn't work that way. So on mouse down is explicitly left. There's no right click detection of that. But there is a separate um, input statement that checks for a button being pressed or a key pressed. Okay. So what you can do is you uh, where you put in what you want to check you're checking the right mouse button, okay? So what we can do is this. Since the right click is not gonna be associated with any one object, it'll go into the GM script. It will be pub public key code, and we'll just call it R MB for right mouse button. Now calling it that in and of itself means nothing. What's important is that you've set this as a key code. So watch what happens. We save this. And then we go to the GM object. Over here you see the new RMB. So if you click on this, you have all these different keys you can press. But if you go far enough down, you'll see that it's not just the keyboard but you also have mouse. Mouse zero is left, mouse one is right. So we're gonna left click on that to select that. So what you're now saying is this variable is the right mouse button and you wanna to check to see if the right mouse button has been pressed. Now, whereas the checking for the left mouse button is its own routine, an input check is actually in the update section. So let's take a look. So if input dot get key down. So that's the, the, the first frame in which you've pressed the mouse down or the button in this case. So get key down. RMB. So this is basically, if you never, if you haven't seen an input statement, this is inherently saying if this is true. So even though you don't have something saying true, it's just saying if this is a true condition. So if this is being pressed, then do something. So if right mouse button is being pressed, what we're going to do is we're going to go to debug.log, and we're going to just type in uh, right mouse click. Again, when you're adding new functionality, I really, really advise you test it. So since it's the first time that we're adding an input statement, let's, let, let's, let's test that it's working. So you're going to run it. I'm going to right click. And there we go, right mouse clicked. But this isn't really what we want it to do. That was just testing the right mouse button. So now that it's clicked, we want something to happen. What we want to do is we want to know how long the word is. So how do we do that? Let's create a new variable. What's nice about this tutorial is it shows you the different types of variables. We have a string variable, we have a transform variable, we have a key code variable, now we have an int. So we'll call this word len. 
short for word length. So what we're going to do is we're going to set word length to be the length of the um, the word that you're spelling out. Because in the last one we said, okay, current word is what you're spelling out. So word length will therefore be equal to current word dot length. And again, debug dot log and we'll print word len in the uh, console here in the uh, log. Now it's going to give us an error because at first this is of a null length. We don't set it to even a blank space. So since it's a null length it's not going to say zero it's going to generate an error don't worry, um, the debug log doesn't show when the game itself is playing, so they won't see it. We can also do something to make sure the error doesn't occur. There's a, there's a bunch of ways to do it, so don't worry. Like I said, it's, a, it's an iterative process. So actually, it doesn't show the length, um, the error yet. I guess it's because it only happens with the right click. Okay, so there we go. So now the error is there. So I right-clicked, and now it gives the error. So I'm going to click on one letter. Now I'm going to right-click, and see it seems one long. I'm going to click on a second letter. I'm going to right-click. It's two. Left-click, right-click. It's three. So it's telling you that this is three letters long, or two letters, or one letter, however many letters it is when you press the right key. So in other words, the right key is going to be you telling the system, okay, I've spelled the word, now check to see if it's out there. So why would we do this? So the whole point is that we want to be able to check against the words. So what I'm going to do in this one is I'm going to put something temporary into place and then we'll probably pretty much uproot it in a subsequent video because again we're just looking at functionality we're just doing the proof of concept to show what you can do so what we're going to do is again in GM script we're going to put Let's see, so public string, and it's going to be 3L word, so three-letter word. Actually, doesn't like the three at the beginning, so let's do uh, word 3L. It's better. So word 3L, so it's a three-letter word, and it's going to be win public string word 4l equals wine so let's get rid of the debug log because we don't care about displaying that what we're going to do is we right click and that sets up uh, the word length okay so now what we want to do is we want to do something with that word length so within actually we could do it outside of this one because word length is not set until you uh, right click so if word length equals equals three then you check it against the three letter word length so if word length equals three if now we want to check current word because that's what's being spelled out so if current word equals equals word 
word 3L, then we want something to happen. So this is if it's 3 word length is 4, it would check in it against the four-letter word. Remember, this only gets set to a value once you right-click. So even though this isn't embedded in here, it won't do anything until you've actually right-clicked and, and set this value. Okay, so what should happen? So what we need to do is if current word is equal to word 3L, then again, debug dot log correct three letter word. Copy this, paste it here, correct four letter word. And again, uh, you're not going to actually, in the final version, just be writing to a debug log. What's going to happen is we're going to have these fill in. But again, baby steps, iterative. So you right-click and it sets this new variable to the length of what you've typed in or what you've been clicking on. And then based on that length, it then compares it to the words that are in there and will let you know if they are correct. So I suppose we could take this one step further before running this because we don't want to just have a positive condition. We don't, excuse me, we don't want to just have a success. We also want to have a fail. So else, actually, sorry, the else has to be in here. My apologies. Very important you put in the right place. So if word length is equal to three, Okay, if it's equal to this, then we want it to display correct. Else, if it's not equal to that, we want something else to happen. So, in other words, if I'd left the else here and then I did this, it would have only it would have been giving me an error message whenever this wasn't three, and we don't want that. We want the error to only occur if it's three and it's not equal to this. So that's why you got to be very careful about this nesting or embedding where you have uh, one if statement inside of another. It's very important that you know exactly what's going on. Okay. So we'll say wrong. And now we copy this. And again, it has to be inside. Now, it's not 100% foolproof, but pretty close. The main problem with this is it only has one correct three-letter word. Uh, as we said, this can have win or it could have new. So um, it's important that, as I mentioned in the other video, you have to be aware of all the contingencies of all the words in there. And then, we'll, like I said, we're going to have to pretty much uproot this. But again, I just want to show you that functionality to begin with. Okay, so I'm going to click on W, I, N, so left click. Now I'm going to right click, and it should say correct, correct three-letter word. Now let's do, say, W, actually, sorry, don't have a reset yet. That will that'll be something else that has to be added. So let's do W, 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 and right click. Wrong through the other word. See, so now you've added another piece of the functionality. You've now, uh, you've, you have the beginnings of being able to check if something is right or wrong. So let's do, um, so when is the only one that works for three? So it, here's an example. That's a real word, but you right click. Since you haven't coded for it, it comes up as wrong. 
Now we'll do wine. Correct four letter word. Wrong four letter word. So there you go. That gives you the basics of, of now comparing your answer that you've entered to the predetermined correct answers. Problem with this is it's only checking for um, these two words. So in the next tutorial, what I'll probably do, um, in addition to adding a reset, so when you right click, it resets, what we'll probably also do is we will replace this with a list. A list basically lets you establish where is a string, a regular string variable has one value at a time. A list lets you uh, write 10, 20, 30, 50 different values if you wanted. So rather than having a single variable with a single value, you'd have a single variable but with 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 values. And then it's just a matter of tracking which one is the correct three-letter word. And you also might have multiple three-letter words. So like I said, it's an iterative process. Each video will get a little bit deeper, but this was a huge jump where we added the right mouse, right mouse button functionality. And now a rudimentary way of checking your entry into the correct entry, uh, uh, the correct uh, answers. And also we need to actually have these light up. All right, so I think that's it for this video. Don't want to get too deep into it. Trying to keep the functionality um, as uh, you know, one video contains one function, um, if possible. That way, you can make a nice clean break and practice with that. So I think that's it for this video.